Kevin of Loxley has been taking the bus a lot lately, and because of that, he's inspired to bring today's game, Cosmic Commuter, featuring a pretty nice-looking blue label with a lot of Actiplac. Let's go ahead and take Cosmic Commuter, pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Cosmic Commuter was published by Activision and carries a copyright year of 1984. It was programmed by John Van Ryzen, who also made the popular hero for the 2600. According to the manual, way back in the 20th century, Ivy League professors invented space colonies, but forgot to consider space traffic jams. And that's where you come in, an astro bus driver for the Galactic Transit Authority. Cosmic Commuter is a Defender-style space shooter for one player only, and has two modes of difficulty, with the Level 2 difficulty being more difficult than the default Level 1 difficulty. The game starts with you landing your rocket module in a Lunar Lander style, pushing up to turn on your thrust and down to cut your engines. This can be tricky as landing too quickly will result in a crash that will cost you one of your lives. After you land, your Astro Bus will detach. You can then fly with the joystick and use the button to fire your blasters. There is a radar screen on the bottom that shows you your eight commuters to pick up. When you see one on screen, you can pick them up by flying right overhead one of them and pressing down. If you take too long to pick them up, they will leave. And according to the manual, you need to pick up at least one commuter per level in order to go to the next. You also have a fuel gauge on the bottom that starts at 9 and counts down. You can pick up fuel pods that float near the top of the screen to refuel. According to the manual, if you really need one, you can go to the top of the screen and shoot three times. Usually, this will result in one appearing, but you need to be careful as you can destroy the fuel pods with your shot as well. After you pick up the final commuter, you can land back on the rocket module, usually by wrapping around the screen if going from right to left like I do. You take off by holding up, which takes a moment to register before it acts. Activates. You get points for every commuter on your ship, but whenever you are destroyed during the level, you lose any commuters you had on board. If you successfully collect and leave with all eight, you get double the points. And since shooting the enemies gets you next to nothing, this is the main way to raise your score. You also get a bonus ship for every 10,000 points. On the first level of difficulty, you see only one type of enemy per level, and when you advance the stage, you typically see new enemies every level until they repeat, but being harder to avoid. On the second level of difficulty, you get a healthy mix of enemies on every level. Graphically speaking, the game looks pretty decent, in my humble opinion, and the sounds were decent as well. Family friendly wise, I would assume that this game would get an E for everyone rating if released today. At the time I researched on eBay, the game was kind of scarce. Loose copies were going for $17 to $20, and one complete copy sold for $66, and those prices include shipping. So what did I think of Cosmic Commuter? Well, overall, it reminds me of a more polished version of Space Jockey, which I reviewed way back in episode 67. I really liked the passenger pickup game mechanic, and the game controlled pretty well too. If I had any complaint, it would be that the game is rather easy, almost too easy, and I'd recommend the hard difficulty for more seasoned gamers. But I still enjoyed my time with Cosmic Commuter, and feel that it's a bit of a shame that it got overlooked when it came out, due to the video game crash that was going on about the same time. So where am I going to rank Cosmic Commuter? Somewhere in the 40s. I do like it more than Quadrant at 45, due to the fact that it's an easier game to pick up and play, but I would rather explore the depths of Dark Chambers at 44. So out of the 124 games, Games I've now ranked on the 2600, Cosmic Commuter is bussing into the 45 position. Cosmic Commuter is one of those obscure titles that you should check out on the 2600. So what do you think of the game? Whether you agree or disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons and follow me on both the Facebook or the Twitter. I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time, I'd like to thank Rosdauer from the forums at Atari.io for lending me the game to review today. Thank you, Roz. I'd also like to thank everyone who supports the show through Patreon, including Turtle Flakes Rob, Michael M., and Isaac S., among many others. Thank you, everyone. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, please go to patreon.com slash gamer. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the Noswear Gamer. Take care and be careful when landing.